welcome to the newest installment of Excel Exposure. Today I'll be going over data validation, which is an important way of, of ensuring that the data that's entered into your spreadsheets corresponds to the, the type of information that should be entered. And so you can limit the way that users are able to enter information and make sure that there won't be any incorrect entries that may screw up your spreadsheet. And you can also use it for yourself to make sure you don't put anything that doesn't uh, necessarily work. And so you can see that there's a screenshot here of the data validation menu. There's multiple types of criteria. Every cell is defaulted to any value, which means you can enter anything into it. Um, you can see from the drop-down here on the right that there's whole numbers, decimals, a list, and list um, includes a drop-down menu in the cell, which is uh, very useful when you have people who don't necessarily know Excel too much um, using it. There's also date time, uh, length of text, and then custom, which can be your own special formula. And so I'm just going to quickly run through each of the types and how you set them up. So first is whole number. The, the way to get to the data validation section, you go to data in your uh, ribbon, and then you click this data validation menu, and then you'll see this pops up, which is similar to what I'm seeing below. I took the screenshot on, on Windows 7, and this is XP, which is why it looks a little different. So here you can see in the settings area, they it would usually default to any value. I've already set these up so that they'll work with the criteria that I mentioned. For whole number, you can choose which way you want the data to, to occur. Um, I'm choosing it between criteria 1 and criteria 2. And so you'll see next to whole number I have a 1 and a 5 written there. And then here in the data drop down menu you can choose what type of validation you'd like. I chose between so that we can have a whole number between those two values and then it'll ask for the minimum and the maximum which I've already pointed to my criteria 1 and criteria 2. In addition to um, the settings which really tell what kind of information can be entered in there's also this uh, input message which you can see on the left is that yellow looks like a sticky note which you can customize what's written in it, the title of it, and the message in between. And as you select any of the cells that have the data validation, that'll pop up and put whatever message you entered into it. There's also an error alert that you can have, and any of these you can change so that they don't show up. You can have no input message. You can also have no error alert, but you probably want to leave the error alert up so that if someone enters incorrect data, they'll get a little error saying that they can't enter it. And so you'll see here if I have whole number error, and it would be you have to enter a valid whole number. And that's really all you have to do once you have that entered in. Once someone tries to use that cell, so let's say I wanted to put in a 3, which should be fine, there's no problem there. If I put in the 6, which is outside of the criteria range, hopefully it'll come up with an error message. Yep. And uh, you need to enter a valid whole number. And again, you can modify this text as you'd like. So really the rest of the data validation examples are already set up in here. I'll just quickly run through them, but really for any of, any of these examples, you could be choosing a different uh, type of data validation criteria. You could also choose a different type. You can modify any of these input messages or error alerts as well. And the only other thing I didn't mention here is that you can change which type of picture shows up when you get an error message, whether it's the yellow triangle or you know, it's basically just a matter of preference and how serious it is. So that's an example of whole number. For decimal, you can see when I highlight the cell, the input message comes up and it says you must enter a number greater than criteria 1. So same thing as before, if you go to data validation, you'll see all the rules that I put in. This time I'm doing greater than or equal to rather than in between. And you'll see that I selected D5 as my criteria. You can also just directly enter these criteria in instead of D5, I could just have 1.5 here, but instead I want to use the other cell so it's easier to change. Again, the input message and an error, and should be okay. So I'll try to enter 0, which is less than. And you'll see with the, with the yellow triangle version, which is called warning, it'll allow you to actually continue and hit yes that you want to put it in there, rather than the other one, which, which makes you stop and doesn't allow it. And if I put something like 1.5, Five should be all right. 1.6, and so this is just a way to ensure that if you if you want someone to enter in a certain amount, and there's never any chance that they should be entering something lower, you could use something like that. And again, the whole number one is only for whole numbers, and decimal is can go beyond the decimal point.
One of the most useful ones and the one I use most frequently is the list data validation. You can see right next to it there pops up this little drop down box which you can click on and it should have the information that you use to select it, the criteria basically. And for any of these you can also use instead of just a range, here I'll show you as this example. If you look at list, the range here is yes, no, maybe, and you can see it says D6 to F6. If I named this range, which I explained in a, another video, so I'll do list example, in the data validation here, instead of D6 to F6, I could put equals list example, and it should be the same list. So that's always good because if you, ch if you change it to a named range and then you modify the named range itself, you don't have to enter or change any of the data validation rules because it will automatically update or what the name range refers to. I won't go through date and time because they're very much similar to, to the other examples. For text length, I'll actually make this a little bit smaller so it's easier to read. This would be good if you're if you're entering a certain amount of information that you know won't be changing how long the length of it is. Like let's say an invoice number or a, a document name and it always is the same either range of, of uh, lengths or a specific length itself. In the data validation menu it's really very similar to the other ones but I'll show you an example. So if I wrote uh, barn it tells me that it was not between criteria 1 and criteria 2. If I put in Barnes with an S, it doesn't give me any error. So that can also be very useful. The last type that I'll go over is the custom data validation. This is essentially when you want to use an option that doesn't exist as of any of the other ones, and you want to use a formula to actually create the uh, customized criteria for how to evaluate the data. So in this example, I wanted to have it be a value that is in between criteria 1 and criteria 2, so it's between 10 and 20, but it's not 13. So if you look at the formula here, you'll see I have custom selected, and once we get into logical formulas, you will better understand that, but anything in AND will evaluate any of the um, statements you have within it, separated by commas, and ensure that all of them are true. So here I'm saying, if all of these are correct, um, then it'll allow the data to be entered. So B10 is greater than D10, D10 is criteria 1, um, B10 is less than E10, which is criteria 2, and B10 is not equal to F10. And just so you're aware in Excel when you're doing not equal to, it's, it's the less than and the greater than sign followed back to back. Kind of looks like a diamond. And that means that B10 cannot equal F10. And this could be any formula you wanted. It could include much more criteria and you can get much more advanced with that, but uh, this is just a simple simple example to demonstrate how this works. So if I went in and put in a 9, it should give me an error message because it's less than 10. If I put in 12, I should be fine. If I put in 22, it'll be too high, so it will not let me put it in. But if I put in 13, which is between 10 and 20, but is not allowed because of the third criteria, hopefully it will also give me an error. And you can see that it does. So that's mainly how data validation is used. You can do it in many different ways to accomplish all sorts of different results, but that's the main way for how to set it up, and feel free to let me know if you have any questions, but hope that was useful.